Hello and welcome to Grange Baptist Church Letchworth and to the church's 57th anniversary. My name is Martin Hallett. I've recently retired as pastor of a church in Bedford. And although we can't meet in person, uh, it's a joy to be able to join you on your anniversary Sunday. I'm conscious that uh, there are many of you that I don't know. I don't even know who's watching this morning, uh, but um, I have had links with the church for a number of years. Um, I haven't come to preach, I think, for a little while, but in recent years I've seen a fair bit of Mark and Adam, and they've been a big encouragement to me, and I, I hope that I have to them. I was actually looking back in my diaries and uh, discovered that the first time I preached at the church was back in 1989, 31 years ago. Uh, we were all younger then, and I guess a lot has changed in those 30 years. So it's good to be with you, and actually that's the theme that I want to speak on uh, this morning, is the theme of change and growth. Because the Bible quite often uses the idea of a journey as a picture of the Christian life. Uh, nothing stands still, nothing stays the same for long. Now, if you're not a Christian, or not yet, or you're not sure, I hope this will still be helpful for you to describe what it's like to be a Christian. In fact, there's a challenge for you too, because Jesus says that when it comes down to it, there are two ways to live, two ways to go in life, two roads, if you will. And he talks about God's way that we can travel along and our own way, whatever that might be. And he tells us that to go God's way may seem particularly hard. The, the gate, the way in may be narrow. The road may be tough to walk along, but it leads to spiritual life, eventually to eternal life with God. Whereas going our own way, whatever way that might be, will only lead to spiritual destruction. So the narrow way and the broad way, the harder way and the easier way is the choice that Jesus gives us. And what I want to do in uh, part one, before we sing a hymn together, is to tell you two things to help you understand this way that we're going uh, along the way that leads to God, God's way. And the first of these things is that it's a journey of faith. The Christian journey is a journey of faith. We had a reading earlier from the letter to the Hebrews, a letter to Christians living in the first century. Uh, we heard about some of the people who lived long before the first century, um, before the time of Jesus, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And the reading told us that they lived by faith. That is to say, they believed in things that they hadn't seen themselves, but had been told about. Here it is, chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So this is a life of faith. And it goes on in verse 3 to give a very obvious example. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In other words, the world had a supernatural, not a natural, origin. Now that's not something we can know by ourselves. Um, we can study the world and there's a lot of evidence for the world being amazingly designed. But God tells us he made it. And we can believe that, we can live by faith. Here's an even more important example. Just over a month ago, we celebrated Easter. Christians believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that. Was I there? No. But the evidence is recorded for us in the Bible. We have to choose, do we believe that or not? I do, but many people don't. So the Christian life is a life of faith. That reading we had earlier mentioned Abraham. He was told certain ways that God would bless him. He wasn't told exactly when or exactly how. God doesn't tell us everything we want to know, but he does tell us what we need to know when we need to know it. But here's the thing. Abraham believed God's word. And believing God's word brought him into a right relationship with God. The Bible says he believed God and he credited it to him as righteousness. So, let me ask, what about you? Are you living by faith? We don't have the same specific promises that Abraham had, but do you know what you need to believe to be a Christian? Let me tell you, if I may. To be a Christian, we need to believe that God made us, but that we have turned away from him and followed our own way. 
We need to turn back to God and trust in his son, the Lord Jesus, who lived exactly the way that we should live, but haven't. He took our sin on himself when he died and rose from the dead so that we can have forgiveness of sins and spiritual life, not at all by doing something, achieving something ourselves, but by asking God's forgiveness and trusting in what Jesus has done. That's the gospel or good news of the Christian faith. And as we believe those truths and trust God to forgive us, God will accept us because of what Jesus has done. Now, please, if you want to know more about what being a Christian involves, do please contact the church. You can go to the website, grangebaptist.org.uk, and use the contact form on the website. The church would love you to get in touch. So that's the first thing. The Christian life is a journey of faith. But secondly, more briefly, it's a journey that we travel together. Did you notice in the reading uh, that it was all plural? Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We don't ever travel alone. One of the hardest things at the moment is for people who live on their own. For many such people, a trip out to see friends or family is a regular part of what keeps them going. And there are still big restrictions on who we can be with and for how long and for what purpose. That's tough. But on the Christian journey, we absolutely must travel together. That's why church is so important. And even though we can't uh, meet physically, we still have online services like this one. We need each other. It's very basic, not only to human life, being in families or friendships, but it's essential in the Christian life as well. Maybe you're listening or watching and you're not involved in a church, not really, uh, not up till now anyway. You might be new to the Christian faith or maybe you have been involved in the past and you've drifted away for whatever reason. If so, well done for being brave enough uh, to tune in now. Maybe it's easier when no one knows that you're there. That's fine. But if you're serious about following Jesus, then actually you need other Christians to help you and they need you. It's a tough journey. We all need encouragement. Also, we need to learn together and to pray together and to share together about our experience of the love and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I must each take responsibility for our own lives. We must commit to following Jesus. But once we're on that road, we'll find a lot of other people traveling the same road. They can help us and we can help them. So we're going to uh, sing now, and then in part two, I want to share two important things that I hope will help you to keep going in the Christian journey. <laughs> 